Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. When it comes to the good, according to the Bible, what they say, oh, that's evil. Right. Oh, I ain't doing that. Right. So I keep the Sabbath. I ain't doing that. I want to do what I want to do. Oh, I, I, I can't buy nothing? No. Because believe it or not, this Bible gives us discipline. This Bible gives us constraints on what to do or what not to do. Right. Because if we live by certain constraints, we'd be bad as better. Right. We wouldn't hate each other. Right. We wouldn't be on drugs. We wouldn't hold our women out. We wouldn't have our kids looking and dressing all immodestly. Our children are supposed to be covered up. But what happened? Our people call good evil. So we got to come back to what God say. We not black, we, we the Israelites. They, but they put black Hebrew Israelite to prove, show you or make you persuade you that there are black Hebrew Israelites. But when in fact we are the Israelites. I can't hear you bro, what you say? Why they tell us we Africans? They always want us to be Africans. Back like the, the soldier said, let's go back to it. Jeremiah 17 and uh, is it 4? Let's get it. Let's go back there. Disconnect, this, let's show you. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. This is why African American was pushed on us. Right. All right, read. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Thy who? Thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. So our enemies, started with the so-called white man, he gave us the term African American. He the one that took away our identity. Because he understood once we stay with our God, that we they, that we always be on top. Let me show you some strategic war tactics, right? Let's go to Judah 5 and 20. Let's go there. Let's go there. Am I, hey, hey, stick around. I want to show you, show you something. You want to get in the shade? Good, good, good. I want to show you some strategic warfare, right? Let me show you how the enemy attacks. Because war doesn't consist of guns alone. No, it doesn't. Us uh, not knowing who we are, that's warfare. Us having our culture stripping away from us, that's warfare. Bring it out. Us having drugs in our communities, that's a form of warfare. Bring it out. Us um, being, uh, what you call that, um, being convinced that homosexuality is good is warfare. Right? Single parent households is a form of what? Warfare. Bring it out. Facts. Everything that we that is evil, we've been accepted to believe that is good. Hold on, let's get Isaiah 5 and I think Isaiah 5 and 20. Let's get that. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe well, unto them that call evil good. That call what? Evil good. Come on. And good evil. Come on. That put darkness for light. And light for darkness. What's up? Woe well, unto them that call evil good. Right here, what you see right now is Bob Billiken Parade. Right. What we've been trying to convince you that this is a form of idolatry. Bring it out. We think it's a good thing, but it's evil. Right. I thought it was all for the kids, but the brother said that down the block, you got kids fighting. Right. So how is it for the kids but the kids are unruly? Right. How is it for the kids where we're teaching our, our kids how to twerk? Right. How to show their butt cheeks? Yeah. Bring it out. You got older women dressed the same way. You got young men walking around with their pants hanging off their butt. You read it from the top. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. But when it comes to the good, according to the Bible, what they say, oh, that's evil. Right. Oh, I ain't doing that. Right. So I keep the Sabbath? I ain't doing that. I want to do what I want to do. Oh, I, I, I can't buy nothing? No. Because believe it or not, this Bible gives us discipline. This Bible gives us constraints on what to do or what not to do. Right. Because if we live by certain constraints, we'd be bad as better. Right. We wouldn't hate each other. Right. We wouldn't be on drugs. Like we wouldn't hold our women out. Right. We wouldn't have our kids looking and dressing all immodestly. Our children are supposed to be covered up. Right. But what happened? Our people call good evil. So we got to come back to what God say.
Read it from top. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness. So everything we've been we doing is upside down. What we think is light is actually darkness. For example, being in the Christian church, that's darkness. You ain't learning nothing in the Christian church. How can you go to church all your life but don't know your nationality? How can you go to church all your life but don't know the dietary laws? You in the church after Sunday cooking hog moths, cooking shrimp, having a fish fry. How can you go to church all your life but when you read Jeremiah 10 and 1, it says do not celebrate Christmas. Did you know that? We're not supposed to celebrate Christmas. You didn't know that? Okay, good. We're going to bring it out. Prove all things. Jeremiah 10 and 1. These are all forms of warfare to separate us from our God. War don't consist of us going to war with guns. The war is up here. The enemy understands that if he do destroy us up here, he always had to be in control. This is proof of the enemy destroying us, not knowing who we are. Hey, my brother, how you doing? See what I'm saying? But we're going we to tell you that Christmas is evil. Because our people call evil good. Why is it that we out here reading the Bible? But I can ask anybody, do they believe in God? Do they love God? They'll they say yes. Right. But where are they? Right. We're bringing out his word. But how come we don't have a flock of people listening? Right. Do you believe in God? Do you love God? Do you love God? I asked you. See, that's what I'm talking about. The theatrics. Come on. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. O house of who? O house of Israel. Because you so-called blacks and Hispanics, we are the Israelites. That's our true nationality. That's one way that the enemy conquered us by giving us his name. By calling us black, Puerto Rican, Panamanian, Ecuadorian. All these terms to separate us. Because really, what's the difference between an African American and Jamaican? Bring it out. What's really the difference? Hell, what's the difference between a Haitian and a Jamaican? Bring it out. No difference. We at the bottom of society. Right. No matter what you call yourself. But we are here trying to bring the remembrance that you are the Israelites. And we must keep his commandments. Here's a commandment right here. Read. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of who? Of the heathen. Guess what? We've been taught in church that heathens are evil. But besides that, heathens are those that's outside of our nationality. Right. Any race outside of the nation of Israel are the heathens. That's right. The Lord says, don't learn the ways of the heathen. They'll learn their ways. That's how we learn Bob Billiken. That's right. Think about it. Before you stepped over here, you didn't know who Bob Billiken was? Bring it out. Chinese you didn't know. Did you know who Bob Billiken was? Hell no. But you know who you learned it from? You learned it from the other nations, the other races. That's who gave you your nationality. That's who gave you your culture. When in fact the Bible is your culture. Like the soldier alluded to, these commandments is our heritage. We got to come back to this. Because deep down in our spirit, we are a proud people. We, we, we flock to a, a, a high power. That's why we fill the churches. But we got to come back to what God say. But it's going to take men to learn this Bible to show you who you are. It's going to take men to keep these commandments and be that example to show you who you are. Let me show you more. Because I said before we shouldn't be celebrating Christmas. Read on. And by the way, it's August, so therefore you have a five-month head start. You have a five-month head start. So if your kids ask you, Daddy, what you get for Christmas, tell them not a damn thing. Start there. Start in August. Come on. Learn not. The way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. They dismayed at what? For the heathen are dismayed at them. So it says, don't be dismayed at the stars. You know what else that's going into? Astrology, astronomy. Zodiac signs. Right. I'm a Gemini. I'm a Leo. I'm a feisty Pisces. <laughs> What's I got to do with God? Nothing. You learn these things from the heathen. All these zodiacs. You got these things from the heathen. You think you had a culture when in fact all this time the culture was given to you by your enemies. Right. Come on. For the custom of the heathen, for the custom of the people are vain. So the custom of the heathens are vain. They don't mean nothing. Guess what? The, the Lord gave the heathens the stars to worship. 
because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's our guy. He ain't the God of everybody else. But guess what? He gave them the stars to worship. Oh, you want to serve something? You serve the moon. That's why Muslims, they serve the moon. That's why you got the crescent moon and the star. They serve that. The Arabs, they worship the moon and the stars. The Lord never gave us those things. Right. He never gave us zodiacs. He gave us his true word. That's right. He gave us his true word. He gave us what to do and what not to do. All we got to do is come back to it. That's right. And that's what we are here for. Trying to bring you back to the word of the Lord. To bring it back to your remembrance that's of who right. you are. All this is false. Read on. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cut at the tree out of the forest. Hey, check it out. They do what? For what cut it a tree out of the forest. So they cut a tree out the forest. So on Christmas, what do you put in your house? A Christmas tree, the oak tree, right? Read that for part from top. For the custom of the people are vain. For what cut it a tree out of the forest. The work of the hand of the workman with the axe. So a man had to cut that tree down. A man had to cut that tree down. Come on. They deck it with silver and with gold. Hey, man, wait a minute. What the, don't they do that on Christmas? They deck it. Deck the holes with falls up. Right? They deck it, right? They deck it with the lights, with the the, gar the ornaments and all that. Right. And they put a little star on top of it. Bring it out. Silver and gold. Right. Silver and gold. Come on. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They fasten it with hammers and nails and they do it not. That it move not. Is it more? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. No, sir. They take it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. Right, because uh, the deep pagan roots behind Christmas with the Christmas tree, it was supposed to mimic Nimrod. You know who Nimrod is? Right, because Guess what? Men die, right? We live and we die, right? But guess what? They, they, they have certain rights to keep their lie going, to keep their legacy going, right? So his legacy was for his for a belief of mythic mythology that that Christmas tree represents Nimrod. So you put this tree in your house in homage of Nimrod. So when you put this tree in your house, you put the gifts under it. You bow down, you put gifts under it. Guess who you bow down to? You bow down to Nimrod. Because guess what? Men die. But they come up with these mythologies to keep their legacy going. Because clearly Nimrod is dead. But when you celebrate Christmas, you rebirth in Nimrod over and over, year by year. And you don't even know it. You don't even know it. What's that uh, precept? Uh, is it Psalms 49.11 that the houses uh, remain the same? Let's get it. Let's get it. That's, a, that's another tactic of the enemy. Think about George Washington. Think about the founding fathers of America. By the way, they was the number one slave owners, by the way. They long gone. They dead already. But what they do, they create a legacy so that way it can live on to this day. Come on, read. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. That their what? Houses shall continue forever and their dwelling place to all generations. Yes, sir. They call their lands after their own names. They call their what? Their lands after their own name. And we on Washington, uh, if you uh, go, uh, I know it's a Washington um, a street on the west side, right? You got Jackson on the west side, right? You have the uh, uh, Mount Washmore. We were just talking about that. You got the founding fathers right there. You got George Washington. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Andrew Jackson, I believe Abraham Lincoln. Guess what? They're dead already. Right, right. But guess what? They created a legacy so their names could live on forever. Same thing with Nimrod. He created that mythology so his name could live on forever. And you've been subconsciously convinced that you're really get doing the right thing. But you're celebrating another man that you didn't even know nothing about. When in fact the Lord gave us laws, statutes, and commandments for us to come back to. Bring it out. When are we going to come back to God? Right. When are we going to come back and do what God say? Right. When are we going to fulfill God's legacy on this earth? Hey, awesome. The Lord asked that question. What you got? Hey, they're doing the same thing with these guys. Right. They're celebrating G.D. or Le'u. 
facts. Guess what? Larry Hoover, long locked up. He ain't never getting out of jail. But guess what? At one point, the whole growth and development movement, all that was a structure to keep us in order. But what happened? We got covetous. We got greedy. We never had this, by the way. But right now, the Lord is calling us today. Let's get Psalms 94.16. Let's get Psalms 94.16. I pray you all hear me out here. When we go create a legacy according to the scriptures. This is the true legacy right here. Read. The book of Psalms chapter 94 verse 16. Hey, my man. What's your name, brother? Amarion? Ray Marion. My name is Ariel. The Lord is asking you a question. Because the Lord wants us to create our own, our own legacy on this earth. Right. And it's going to come to pass whether we're here or not. But we're here. We want to be part of that legacy. America's not going to last forever. The founding fathers, they understood that. That's why their goal was to destroy us. So that way we could keep this economy going. That way we could continue to build this kingdom. So that way we continue to be asleep. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? You hear that? Who's going to rise up? Who's going to rise up against the evildoers, right? Read from top. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? In order for us to rise up against the evildoers, we can no longer call evil good. It says, well, so then they call evil good. When in fact, the Lord said, who's going to rise up against the evildoers? Right? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's the question that the Lord has for us. That's the legacy we need to be building right now. Who's going to stand up against the workers of iniquity? Who's going to stand up for what's right? Bring it out. We have a whole bunch of our people out here. But clearly, based on what I'm looking, it ain't a whole lot of people that's going to stand up for what's right. right. But guess what? The Lord ain't looking for numbers. That's right. He ain't looking for numbers. Let me show you what's going to happen. Zechariah 13 and 8. Or is it 14 and 12? 13, 13 and 8. Let's get it. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two parts shall what? Be cut off. And die. So that's two out of three people is going to die. Two out of three people is going to die. That's a ratio of one third. Only one third of our people going to make it in these last days. Only one third of our people are going to repent. And stop celebrating Bob Billiken. Only one third of our people are going to repent and wake up. And come back to God. Nation is men leading by example.